plastics or plastics if you're posh. Advantages. They can be made with variable strengths, densities, insulators, conductors, many other properties. And they're good substitutes for wood, silk, leather, stone, glass, metal, many other things. More advantages. They're made from readily available oil and even coal. What is the thunder and lightning sound here? Oh yes, oil. Well, the plastics, when they uh, are finished with, or used up, or burnt, or degraded, are going to turn into carbon dioxide, as will the coal. And carbon dioxide, well, that's climate change, isn't it? Probably should leave those carbon-based fuels in the ground. Multiple problems there. More advantages. They have a low reactivity. And why is that, Thornley? I'll tell you. Because they have strong bonds, inter- and intramolecular bonds. And they're pretty much insoluble in water and pretty much insoluble in oils as well. So what's the problem with that? They do not easily bio or photodegrade. Biodegrading is when uh, life forms take the plastic and break it up uh, into safer byproducts, such as carbon dioxide and water, safer than the plastic anyway. It's mostly bacteria and fungi that break down plastics, but plants can do so too. But of course, animals, uh, if they eat plastics, may choke and die. Photodegradation is via the sun. Advantages, plastic can be recycled. Disadvantage, a lot of plastic isn't recycled, it needs to be separated. Most of it ends up in landfill, and a lot of it ends up in the world's oceans. Okay, some of the plastics are now biodegradable, and that gets a very big meh. A lot of them are biodegradable in the following manner. Get some starch and embed tiny bits of plastic into the starch. Now the starch is biodegradable, and so when that breaks down, natural processes, maybe even biodegradation. The plastic bag seemingly just disappears, but it doesn't because you're left with a lot of those tiny plastic fragments. And latest research shows that those are causing lots and lots of problems. Far, far down in the food chain, phytoplankton, tiny fish, etc. And it can be burnt to provide energy after use. That's great. Well, here comes that thunder and lightning again. If you burn them at low temperatures, it produces lots and lots of toxic gases. Carbon dioxide's bad for the lungs and blood. So soot. Hydrogen cyanide, my God, that poisons your blood. HCl, bad for the lungs. HC is hydrocarbons. Those can damage your brain. Dioxins and PCBs, comes up in later videos, give you cancer. So burn it at high temperatures then. You make carbon dioxide. Well, that's global warming, isn't it? Greenhouse effect. Nitrogen oxides, that's for smog and lung problems. And chlorine compounds do no end of harm. Seem to be mutagenic, carcinogenic. And on that happy note, we're done.